preschool grown-ups. It's Miss Lisa at Worthington Park um, coming to give you a few ideas that you can do that go along with our Storytime Bears theme this week. So one of the best things I think you can do with bears is to do some fun explorations around going on a bear hunt. So you can start with reading the story going on a bear hunt. You can start with a song going on a bear hunt. There's a fun one called Cool Bear Hunt by Dr. Jean that my kids always really enjoy. So you can do something around the cool bear hunt idea. And then I really like to think, where would I wanna go if I was going on a bear hunt? And I wouldn't, I wouldn't go on a bear hunt because I get scared really easily. So um, if you want to come up with some ideas of fun places that your child would like to go, for a bear hunt, you can make some artwork based around that. So if what they wanted to do would be to go through a candy factory, like Dr. Jean says, then you could maybe cut pictures of candy out of magazines and glue those on as part of your art. Or if you're making swishy, swishy grass, you can cut a strip of green and then cut all the way down because fringe cutting, that's what that's called is fringe cutting, is one of the earliest ways that our friends start to work on their cutting skills. So that's a really important early step. Um, so you can create with whatever you have around your house. I do like to make it multi-layered because adding a little bit of complication makes it feel more official to the kids. So if you have things you can glue on, add to it, feathers, whatever you wanna put on it. Um, you can have a lot of fun making it, but I think it's really fun to make a bear and hide the bear somewhere in the picture. So you can, if you wanna draw it and cut it out and grow it up, you can do that. If you wanna have your child cut it out and, grow, and glue it on, um, they can do it too. And then you can have, like show other people the picture and try to have them find the bear. Um, sometimes my friends are not super sneaky and sometimes they are and it's lots of fun to see what kind of artwork they make to hide their bears. Um, you could even put it in a teddy bear factory. That'd be fun, huh? All right, so that's our first idea is making some artwork inspired by going on a bear hunt. My next idea is that if you can, go on a bear hunt and go explore somewhere around where you live. So you can go explore some forests and go on a bear hunt through the forest. You can um, just go on a trail near your house to a playground and try just playing along as you go through the forest. You can try stomping, you can try tiptoeing, you could do lots of different ways of getting through and then you can sing that little going on a bear hunt rhythm and you can do it as a call and response which is where you say something and they repeat it or since most kids like to also be the one in charge they can say something and then you repeat it and you can do it for a little while and it might extend your walk if you have a, a little one who gets kind of tired of walking making it into a game might make it a little more fun point out some of the things around you and have fun exploring that way. All right, so that's our go on our bear hunt adventure time. The next idea I had is that normally here when we're doing bear week, we get out our Duplos and I have some little bears for a bear sorting game that we play and they can build dens for their bears. A den is a bear habitat or a cave. Um, but if you don't have Duplos at home, it's even gonna be more fun because what you can do is make a den or a bear cave with things you have around the house. So you can cover a table with some blankets or you can um, do what we call building a blanket fort when we were kids. You can do something similar to that and have your child be the bear and they can try to make it all comfy cozy. And maybe if you're really lucky, they'll go in there and hibernate and take a nap for a little bit. Um, but have lots of fun building it and get a little bit messy. And the more that your child is problem solving, the more they're working on those engineering skills in STEAM. Because STEAM is that science, technology, engineering, art, and math. So when we work on things like building, we're working on those engineering and problem solving skills. All right, so that's our Duplo den idea or a blanket den. Um, you can also study bears, not in person, do not go study any bears, unless you go to the zoo. You could go to the zoo and sit and watch the bears for a little bit and write down what you notice. 
Um, but what I also like to do is to put on a video about bears. Uh, Disney Nature has a pretty good one just called Bears. So if you have Disney Plus, you can watch it there. Um, but you can watch it. Get out your little binoculars, make a pair with toilet paper rolls. Um, so they can watch the bears and observe them in their natural habitat. And then they can write down anything they see, those observations, they can write those down on a clipboard with a piece of paper on it. So I think I've talked before a couple times about the fact that kids will write so much more if it's on a clipboard. If they're walking around, if they're active, and they feel like they're doing something really important with the clipboard. So they will write a lot. So even if it doesn't necessarily make sense to you, even if all they're sounding out is b in bear, that's great, that's fantastic. That's early listening, early writing skills, and early reading. Um, if you have an older one who wants to write down specific words related to it, they could do that. If you have a younger one who enjoys drawing more, they can draw some observations still. Um, but really play up that they're being a scientist because scientists observe things as they are, write down what they notice, and then they keep track of it. So they're just documenting their observations and you can use those big fancy words and they will love it. All right, the next thing I had is that you can try making a very fuzzy looking bear painting. Now if you, I know we're painting on plates again, so I'm sorry, but if you have plates at home, you can um, pour a little bit of brown paint, take a fork, like a plastic fork, or you can use a regular fork and then just wash it off afterward. It would be fine. Um, but you can dip the fork in the paint and then do scratch marks with the fork and they're painting with the fork, which sounds a little bananas, I know, but it makes really cool fur texture. So they can cover the whole thing with the brown fur to make their bear. And then this is a multi-day project. So then the next day you could come back and make eyes for your bear with white construction paper um, and then draw it on and have them cut it. You can make a little nose for your bear. You can add ears for the bear. Super cute. They turn out really adorable. Alrighty, so then the last thing that I had for you to do is that if you would like, you can make a Brown Bear, Brown Bear inspired book. So if you've read Brown Bear, Brown Bear um, by Bill Martin Jr. and illustrated by Eric Carl, then you know that Brown Bear, Brown Bear is going to see something and he's gonna see the next thing, and they're gonna see the next thing, and you can have your child draw the animals that they want and then color them whatever color they wanna make them, and then you can turn it into a book. There's a lot of different fun ways that you can make things into a book. Um, and then they can read that book to other people, so you can write down their words. Brown bear, brown bear, what do you see? I see an orange fox looking at me, and then you can have it go to whatever that next animal is, if you've read the book, it makes sense. If you haven't, my description might not be clarifying, so I'm sorry, but you can have them read it to other people. And then that's a really powerful early reading skill because they feel like they're really reading it to other people. And you and I know that they are just predicting it based on the pictures and that is okay. They're still taking pride in their ability to read and they're still taking pride in the work that they already did, which is fantastic. So enjoy making the book. I hope some of these other bear ideas work really well for you and the kids that you're taking care of. And I really hope that pandemic preschool is going okay. Best of luck and I will talk to you next week. Bye.